now we're going to see some parameters in the left ventricle and pulse pressure for the valvulopathies and congestive heart failure. So first I will put the left ventricle, well, mm, left atrium, left ventricle, right ventricle and right atrium. The septums, here were the valve, whatever, but I use here the left side. Here is the mitral valve and here is the aorta, here is the aortic valve. We'll do it bigger. Like this. Alright. First is in aortic stenosis. Uh, well, we are going to see aortic stenosis, aortic insufficiency, mitral stenosis, mitral insufficiency, congestive heart failure. The parameters are end diastolic volume, end systolic volume, stroke volume, ejection fraction, end diastolic pressure, and pulse pressure. So, in aortic stenosis, the problem is the valve, the aortic valve, do not open properly. So, when the ventricle is contracting, we have less blood that is going into the aorta, so the stroke volume is decreased. The volume that is in the heart after the systole is increased because we have less blood that is going to the aorta. But the volume that the ventricle uh, has after the, the end of diastole is completely normal. The ejection fraction is the stroke volume divided by end diastolic volume. Uh, this is the stroke volume decreased and the end diastolic volume remains the same. So, ejection fraction is diminished. End diastolic pressure is increased because the ventricle is fighting against a, a stenotic valve. And pulse pressure remains the same. The pulse pressure is only going to change in aortic insufficiency and in congestive heart failure. The only valvulopathy in which we have changed in, in pulse pressure is just aortic insufficiency. Alright. Uh, next is for aortic insufficiency, we have the valve to not close completely. So mm, the ventricle is contracting, sends blood to the aorta, and now in the relaxation, the blood is coming to the ventricle from aorta to the ventricle, and now there is no isovolumetric relaxation. So we have blood coming to the ventricle, and so in the diastole, that is when the atrium is filling the ventricle, we have ventricle is filling because of blood coming from the atrium and also from the aorta. So the end diastolic volume is increased. If we have more end diastolic volume, we have more blood that we can send to the aorta, so the stroke volume is increased and the end systolic volume could, could remain the same or could be a little bit low. That depends if we are sending more blood or not. Um, the ejection fraction, this is systolic vol stroke volume divided by end diastolic volume. The other will have uh, increased in both, but uh, maybe the stroke volume increases a little bit more, that is, if the, stroke, if the end systolic volume decreases. So this could be increased. The end diastolic pressure. Uh, usually remains the the same for for insufficiency of the valves could be mitral or could be uh, aortic insufficiency whatever usually the pressure of the ventricle in insufficiency remains the same and pulse pressure pulse pressure is increased because here we have more blood sending to the aorta so the systolic pressure increases and the, the blood is returning to the ventricle in the diastole. So the diastolic pressure in the aorta is decreased. The pulse pressure is systolic pressure minus the diastolic pressure. If the systolic pressure is increasing and the diastolic pressure is decreasing, the pulse pressure is a lot increased. And this uh, presents with head bobbing or uh, pulses in the nails or we can listen the pulse in the femoral artery, popital artery 
or we could, we could also feel the collapse of the artery, uh, could be of the carotid arteries in the diastole. This is Corrigan sign. And we also have another sign, this is uh, Austin Flint. In Austin Flint sign, uh, we have blood coming from the aorta to the ventricle can hit the mitral valve. And as mitral valve is being hit, this is occurring in diastole when ventricle is getting filled from the atrium. So the valve, the mitral valve is open. And when the blood is coming from the aorta to the ventricle that is going to hit the mitral valve, the mitral valve could get closed. And if it gets closed, it's like if we have a stenosis. So we would need to differentiate this between um, the aortic insufficiency with Austin Flint sign and, our, and mitral stenosis. But we certainly would listen to this flow, this flow of blood that is returning to the ventricle. Alright. Uh, next, for mitral stenosis, we have now the valve from atrium to ventricle is very stenotic. The increased pressure is in the atrium, not in the ventricle. So, in the ventricle, eh, could be decreased or could be uh, could remain the same. There is nothing changing in the ventricle. The blood that the atrium can send to the ventricle is diminished because of the stenotic valve, so decreased end diastolic volume. If we have end diastolic volume, also we have less uh, stroke volume, we have less blood going through the aorta, and we have uh, the end systolic volume uh, could could remain the same or could be a little bit decreased because uh, we also have we have less end diastolic volume, but we also have less uh, stroke volume, but the end uh, end diastolic volume decreases more. Alright, okay. um, ejection fraction would be decreased because we have a stroke volume divided by uh, stroke volume divided by end diastolic volume. I said that the end diastolic volume decreases um, much more than the stroke volume. In this case, if it is like that, the ejection fraction would be uh, elevated. But usually we have the ejection fraction to be diminished because we cannot send a lot of blood. So sometimes the stroke volume decreases more than the end diastolic volume, and so we have decreased ejection fraction. And the pulse pressure remains. Next, in mitral insufficiency, in mitral insufficiency, the mitral valve do not close properly, and so the atrium fills the ventricle, and when the ventricle is contracting, yes, it sends blood to the aorta, but also to the atrium. So the blood going um, outside, uh, out or forward from the uh, ventricle that is just forward to the aorta is diminished because we have a decrease in the in the resistance of the ventricle. We have increased um, yes, increased afterload because we now can send blood to the atrium and the atrium has been less uh, blood pressure. So the one is that the ventricle is sending overall more blood out of the ventricle. That is just the stroke volume is increased. But yes, we are sending more blood, but we are sending blood to the atrium that we before could not do it. And we are taking uh, blood also that we would normally send to the aorta, we are sending it to the, the to the atrium because the atrium has less pressure. So, well, I didn't put that parameter, the forward stroke volume, that is the volume that the ventricle is sending specifically to the aorta, but that will be diminished. Next, if we have um, more blood in the ventricle, that is, we have increased end diastolic volume. This is because the atrium is sending blood to the ventricle, as usual, then the ventricle contracts and sends blood to the atrium. Now, when the mitral valve is going, well, it is always open, but in the diastole, that now the atrium is going to send blood to the ventricle in the filling of the ventricle. The ventricle is receiving blood that came originally from the uh, pulmonary veins, but also is receiving the blood that the ventricle 
sent to the atrium, and now the atrium is returning heat to the ventricle. So the end diastolic volume is overall increased. The end systolic volume usually could remain the same because we are increasing the end diastolic volume and the uh, stroke volume. So the end systolic volume could remain the same or could be a little bit elevated. Yeah. Next, the pulse pressure remains the same and the ejection fraction is increased. We have more uh, stroke volume. Yet we have increased stroke volume and increasing in diastolic volume, but the stroke volume increases more. So the no, actually I I don't know what I say in uh, mitral insufficiency uh, and systolic volume, but you know we we have uh, more uh, volume at the end of diastole, and for that we also can send more volume, but because we have the less resistance. In the atrium, we send it to the atrium and the end systolic volume is decreased. Uh, next, the or now in congestive heart failure, the pressure in the ventricle is increased. So, pressure in the ventricle is increased. Oh, you see here, you, you got the ejection fraction and the uh, pressure in the left ventricle remains the same. Now, for congestive heart failure, the pressure in the ventricle increases, the ejection fraction, or first the stroke volume decreases because the ventricle has trouble in sending the blood, so and system, a, a stroke volume decreases, mm, that increases the end systolic volume because we are not sending a blood, not too much blood, and the end diastolic volume is increased because the the heart is getting full of of blood. Um, what else? The uh, the ejection fraction is decreased. We have decreased stroke volume, decreased stroke volume, and increased decreased stroke volume and increased end diastolic volume. This results in an in decrease in uh, the result that is ejection fraction, so decreased ejection fraction is decreased, and pulse pressure is decreased because if we are not sending uh, blood to the aorta, the systolic pressure decreases. So we have the systolic pressure that uh, translates to a decrease in pulse pressure. So the only change in pulse pressure is in some valve or in the aortic insufficiency, and in the uh, in the aortic insufficiency increases pulse pressure. And in congestive heart failure, the post pressure decreases.